Peter is told three times to kill and eat. Three times he tells Peter, kill and eat. And three times, how does Peter respond? By no means, Lord. Nothing unholy or unclean have I ever eaten. Again, my paraphrase. Three times he tells them that. Here you have Peter arguing with this voice from heaven. So the subsequent passages, how many of you read in your scriptures where it says, and so thus Peter rejoiced, and he got on a spit, and he put the pig on it, and he began to roast it. He celebrated and had some bacon wrapped shrimp. It's not in the text. In fact, you will not find anywhere in the text where it says that they were eating unclean creatures. And yet, the vast majority of Christian preachers have taught this, and it is no wonder we are causing Jews to stumble. It is no wonder that we're causing them to stumble. You're going to tell them that your Messiah is someone he is not. Oh, it breaks my heart. To the Jew first and then to the Greek. I want my heart breaks for Judah because Judah is looking at the church and they're going, why do you have so much joy? Why do you have so much forgiveness? Why do you have so much love? Why do you have so much grace? But you deny it with your testimony. Yes, what you eat is important. And I know that not all preachers will preach this. Is it a salvational issue? Absolutely not. I will not tell you. I do not believe that I was there at Arby's and I'm chowing down on that roast beef sandwich. I'm not telling you all of a sudden it's like, oh, my salvation just went away. No. I'm not telling you that I'm more holy than somebody who's eating something else. But what I am telling you is I am noticed as being different because I choose not to eat certain things. We don't find in any subsequent text Peter killing and eating. Now here's the thing, is if this was really about this, and Peter's arguing with this voice from heaven, if you were having an argument with God and you were directly telling him, absolutely not, I'm going to disobey you, what do you think would happen? Wouldn't you think there would be some kind of judgment? There would be consequences for his disobedience? There would be some kind of corrective a prophet would come along, maybe like Nathan came to David and said, you're that man. Wouldn't there be some kind of public rebuke, some kind of humiliation? Yet we don't find Peter is anywhere. Not only does he not do the thing that this voice tells him to do, but he's not punished. He's not chastised. He's not rebuked. He tells God three times or this voice from heaven three times by no means. I am not supposed to eat those things. And what happens because he stands on God's Torah, not on a personal revelation, God gives him an understanding. This was never about animals. It was always about men. We don't find Peter ever getting punished for ignoring a semi-direct command from heaven. This should lead us to the conclusion that Peter's trance was a divine revelation about Gentile inclusion not a rewriting of the Torah of Moses.